Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Rob Staffschult of New Richmond is a Republican candidate running in the 10th Senate District. The primary is August 11th. Rob, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me, Steve. It's great to be here in a virtual world and not, not face-to-face. We normally do it that way, but I'm, I'm happy we made it work anyway. Yep, so am I. Um, well, my question for legislators who either want to get reelected or move up to the Senate, if you are successful, top priority in, in the next session, Rob, well, normally I think uh, candidates have a list of things that they like, you know, to start working on and things that we need to do. But I think this is a unique year, Steve. I think um, with all the COVID-19 things that have happened in the last six months, one of the things that I really want to focus on is kind of getting our economy back up and rolling like it was uh, prior to that, or at least as close to it as we could, yeah. but doing that in a responsible way so that uh, our seniors and our most vulnerable are still protected and, and have some of the things that they need to make sure that they feel safe in our community. But uh, trying trying to navigate ourselves down that stream so that uh, our economy can get back up and working while still um, making sure our seniors and our most vulnerable are safe. Well, following up on that, Rob, if the governor's right and if our tax collections, general fund tax collections are going to be $2 billion with a B short this year, yeah. do you cut spending or do you raise taxes and fees? Uh, you know, I don't know if the governor's numbers are right on the two billion, but I can tell you this: it's almost uncertain that that uh, it certainly is going to be a deficit in our tax revenues. We, we can see that we shut down the economy, and having been in Madison for two terms now in the state legislature, the budget process is an enormous chunk of the first year of the biennium schedule. So we're going to go into that full force, um, and and unfortunately, it's going to make some tough decisions here and there. We're going to have to cut some things. Uh, where we can tighten our belt where we can try to find more efficiencies maybe push off a few things if we find that we can uh, for another year or hopefully get the economy going and get those tax revenues rolling back in one of the things that really excites me is uh, that's the concern now but I think at some point if we can get it back and get it going that I I think a lot of people are kind of hesitating to engage in economic activity but when it does I'm hoping the floodgates really open so that we kind of make up for lost ground I don't think we'll ever get all of it back, but uh, I, I think we could could move forward and kind of get a floodgate of the economy, uh, the, uh, the economy getting rolling, and uh, hopefully that'll help up help offset some things. You wouldn't be a part of raising taxes or fees to 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 deal you know, with that shortfall, right? Na- that's not in my nature and my composition. Not in your nature. It's it's really tough for me to do that, but. Uh, you know, you know, as we go forward, we always try to do what's best for the people and and uh, and the constituents here in the 10th Senate District, or previously in my in my current Assembly District of the 29th. And uh, it, it'll be like a budget process I don't think we've seen before, just due to the special circumstances. So uh, I think that we're going to have to figure out how this works. And I, I don't think anybody can say with a definite answer they don't know how this next budget process is going to go. We don't have the numbers in. We don't know what we're going to need yet in, in some areas, so I think it's going to be difficult. Okay, uh, new subject. In light of some of the videos showing how some police officers treat those in custody, the governor recommended that nine-bill package, uh, ban choke holds, ban no-knock warrants, uniform training standards for Wisconsin police officers. Uh, could you support the governor's police reforms, Rob? Uh, I don't know if I would support all of his reforms, but I... I I support training for our officers. I listen up here in Northwest Wisconsin. I'm proud to stand with our with our law enforcement officers, and and I have a good working relationship through the last two terms in the legislature with them, uh, working on things like mental health and Chapter 51, as well as the needs in the community. And I think uh, I, I think 99% of those folks are great, and they're good for our community, and we really need to support them. Uh, if, if they feel like extra training is, is needed and if they think some of the things the governor is uh, proposing is warranted and that we need to do those, I stand with those guys. They're in that field every single day and 
and I'm not. So that's part of the, the ability once you become a state legislature and I've been in for two terms that you develop that relationship where they can call me up on my cell phone and say, hey, this is a this is a good deal. We need you to support this. And, and I kind of take them for their word at that. So uh, and I appreciate that relationship. Let's talk about reapportionment. You know, the Constitution now says the party in power will draw the next congressional legislative lines. The governor wants a people's commission that would uh, draw the lines and then forward them to the lawmakers to enact. Uh, where are you on that issue? Yeah, I think that's an ongoing issue, and I think it comes up every time we have a census. So uh, traditionally, the law is that uh, the legislature draw those lines, and whichever party is in power, everybody assumes that they're going to gerrymander them in their favor. And, and it's gone both ways through history. But I think a good example of, uh, you know, a good argument against gerrymandering, and there's plenty of arguments for it, but that there is, but uh, the 10th Senate district that I'm running for has been a long-held Republican Senate seat, and it's it's currently held by a Democrat, Patty Schaffner. So I think that goes to show you that um, drawing those district lines don't always mean that they're gerrymandered. If they did, Patty Schaffner wouldn't have this seat. So, Okay. What's your position on both medical and recreational marijuana? Uh, listen, as a young man, my mom uh, got sick with cancer and ended up dying when I was in high school. Uh, and so I've, I've had firsthand experience on what it's like when somebody is battling a terminal Ill illness uh, or any illness for that matter. And I, I've, I've moved myself on the scale on marijuana in the medical field. I had great conversations with uh, now State Representative Mary Falskowski about her experiences in being sick. Uh, she's also run for the state Senate. And we talked about things that we could maybe do. I am open to that discussion. I think that um, I think there's good points on both sides and, and the side that says that we shouldn't do medical marijuana is mostly a concern on regulation and dosage size and making sure things are consistent. So I'm open to have that conversation. Recreational marijuana, again, I, I've got a pretty good relationship with law enforcement officers across the Northwest part of Wisconsin, not just my assembly district. And I know that they traditionally have been against that. One of the concerns that I have personally, uh, aside from the things that they say is, you know, for like drinking alcohol, we have a blood alcohol uh, content test where, um, you know, if, if somebody's wife and, and son are driving down the road in a car and they get in an accident with somebody who's impaired, we can, we can test them for their blood alcohol level. <clears throat> I think that technology, when I first became in office, wasn't even available and now it is. And I just think that we need to have that ability to test that impairment level before we allow recreational use and we end up having car accidents where people are negligently killing other people and there's no way to decide how that happened. I, that was my biggest concern is how to, how to regulate that. And, and, you know, if people make poor decisions, we need to hold them accountable. Let's talk about property taxes. We're a high property tax state. That's why there's caps and limits on yep. what local governments and school districts can levy in property yep. taxes. Of course, you can exceed those with referendums. If uh, you're in the state Senate, uh, uh, do you, would you vote to keep those property tax limits and caps in place or do away uh, with them? Those local officials, school boards, uh, municipalities, they have a tough job uh, trying to do the best they can with sometimes a budget that doesn't meet all of their needs. However, I would keep them in place and here's why is because the local folks have the most local decision on how their, their taxes go with the referendum. They can decide, okay, this is a special need this is something we really need to do and I'm willing to pay for that. And I think that's the right decision is to allow people to do that. Because local governments are so reliant on the property tax, is it time to look at alternative sources of revenue for local governments? Maybe expanding uh, our 5% sales tax to some now exempt products and services or giving local governments the option of uh, levying a half cent sales tax. Time to give local governments some revenue options? Yeah, again, I'm for local control. So if local folks want to have that decision, one of the things that concerns me, though, is if we add a half a percent sales tax on a county level or, or whatever level you want to do it, is there should be a sunset or a review process. I don't think it should be forever. I think it's fair to say, well, we've got some special needs now. We need to add a half a percent sales tax. Um, and if the local people agree with that, they vote on it, that that's the way it is. That shouldn't be forever. We should review that after three years, five years, seven years, whatever that time should be uh, and say, do we still need this or are things, you know, we took care of an issue and now it's, it's a better place. Uh, you know, we've talked about raising the gas tax. 
in previous budget cycles when I was in the state legislature. And I think one of the concerns I have for that is traditionally, I mean, I was born and raised here. Uh, when I was a kid, everybody used to, you know, this is kind of a bedroom community, a lot of, not all, but a lot of people work over in the Twin Cities and everybody would fill up their gas tank before they came back across the border and they didn't support our local convenience stores and gas stations. And in the last decade or so, that's kind of balanced out because Minnesota has had to raise their gas tax a few times. So um, I, I have to support the small businesses in my community and I do. And I think that raising that gas tax puts an extra burden on um, state border communities, you, you know, areas like mine, down along La Crosse, along the Illinois border, wherever it might, not just mine, but I think that that's one of the things we need to consider is how we would affect those people within 30, 40, 50 miles of a border uh, and those small businesses. So I think, you know, that that's a tough tax for me to handle as a gas tax. I think one of the other things is up here in Northwestern Wisconsin, we, we've always, and I, I really got to learn it even more when I, when I got in my first term, trying to battle to get those dollars from the Southeast part of the state, Madison, Milwaukee and the Southeast corner and get them back up into the Northwest part of the state. Uh, you know, there's a lot of mega projects down there and I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have those mega projects or whatever, but those are really exper expensive projects and seems like we're constantly battling to pull those dollars back up here to the Northwest part of the state. And, and my colleagues and I in the budget process and honestly on both sides of the aisle, we all try to fight for those dollars and bring them back up here. And I just like to continue to do that. A couple of questions on the pandemic. It not only lower tax revenues, but it puts great strain on state and local healthcare systems. We've, we've seen how hospitals are on the front lines of fighting COVID nationally. And of course in Wisconsin, I guess my question, if you're in the state Senate voting on the next budget, do hospitals deserve an even greater priority than they may have in the current budget, Rob? Well, I think one of the problems with COVID is you're going to have less revenue and more needs across the board, not just in hospitals, but every every kind of service provided for healthcare uh, and communities and, and small businesses, all of those are going to increase their needs, even though our revenues have been depleted. So we're going to have to look at that and we're going to have to make tough decisions on where to send the limited dollars that we have. Uh, if the hospitals uh, come to the table and, and they say that this is, you know, a great need and we decide that's where it is. I have no problem, um, you know, supporting our hospitals. I think in Northwestern Wisconsin, for being as rural as we are, we have a great uh, medical access and medical facilities and we've got great doctors here. So um, I would continue to support that as I always have. And the Wisconsin Hospitals Association has really done a great job. Early on in the pandemic, we had some Zoom meetings and conference calls and I lose track whether we Zoomed or we blue jeaned or we conference called, but at some point we had discussions and they were the ones that put up kind of the, the dashboard on their website so we could monitor. And a lot of us legislators really use their dashboard to see where we were with available beds and the number of hospitals in our area and, and great information. So they, they've been right spot on from the beginning on providing information and I think we'll, we'll continue to support that. If a business follows all the health and safety COVID rules and regs, whether it comes from WEDC or the uh, national CDC, should they be immune from a frivolous lawsuit? Yeah, I think at some point we have to look at some kind of protections. Now, my concern is that we don't, a lot of times in politics, we swing too far, right? The pendulum swings and we go too far one way or the other. But I think, you know, if, if you as an individual decide that I want to go to the local hardware store uh, mom and pop hardware store and you say I need some nuts and bolts or some tools or whatever you might need if you make the choice to go to that hardware store in public if you're a high-risk person or if you're not a high-risk person and and somehow you think that you got COVID-19 from going there I believe that was your choice it was in you know the business provides the service you decide if you want to go and nobody mandated that you had to go there uh, so we have to protect those people we'll wipe out our economy if we sue everybody that that uh, has a business in this district. So I think, I think that's something we need, need to do, but we also need to make sure that we're conscious of making sure that, um, that we don't go too far and, and do too much so that nobody can ever sue for a liability that should be. If a local government plans a major public works project, should the uh, bidding standards and requirements be, uh, give a preference to Wisconsin businesses the reason I ask is a, a study found in 2015, out-of-state contractors 
for local government public works got 72 million in contracts in 2015, but that more than doubled to 146 million in 2018. Should local governments have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? Uh, well, you know, I'd always like to see those contracts go to our local businesses and our, our local workers, and it's great for our economy. Uh, however, the other side of that, and one thing that I think is interesting in the statistics that you just threw out, is I would like to know more of if that number doubled, was that because that they beat out our local businesses or our local businesses? What I'd like to know is if our local businesses were so busy in the economy that we had, that they just couldn't take on more work and therefore the reason that it doubled was because we just couldn't do it. Uh, okay. I think that's possible. And, but I think, you know, in general, you, you know, the, the direction you're going is do I support uh, local jobs going to local people? I do. We just have to make sure that it's cost effective to the taxpayers and that we're getting the best bang for our buck. If we can't put artificial um, requirements in there to mandate that they have to be local, which then would drive up the cost of the taxpayers. We have to be conscious of that too. Last question. You've got a primary August 11th. Uh, you want to highlight differences between you and your primary opponent? Why are you most qualified? Uh, you know, I, I I won't speak badly. I've never spoken badly to any of my opponents on your show or on the interview here. So I, I just stand on my own record. I've got two terms in the state legislature. Uh, you can look up how I voted on different issues. I, I feel confident in the things that I've done on property rights and sportsman's rights, personal freedoms, and our business community and the things I've supported. Uh, and I hope that I'm the choice that the people want to continue that kind of work on the Senate level. State Representative Rob Staffschult of uh, New Richmond is a Republican candidate in the 10th Senate District. The primary is August 11th. Rob, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me, Steve. Have a great day. You too. Thank you very much. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association. Quick Trip. Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.